Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. This has been the worst day of my life, and I need to let this all out. I'm a 27-year-old woman, and I've moved out of my childhood home due to a very toxic family. Many people would think that I had it great because we're wealthy, but I was miserable. My older sister, 30, would get away with anything. She was awful to me growing up, and she's a replica of my mother. She would often insult me, break or steal my possessions, and blame everything on me. My mother was very controlling and would, be, would dictate everything. She would want everything done her way, no one could oppose her, and she was always right. My father was cold and detached. He let my mother do whatever she wants, as long as he wasn't bothered. When I turned 18, I left home despite my parents' protests. They said I wouldn't have their money, but I didn't care. Any money in the world wasn't worth living like this. So with whatever money I had on me, I left. It was really hard, and I had to learn many things, but it was worth it. I put myself through school, met my best friend, who we'll call Kay, and created a comfortable life for myself. It wasn't lavish or anything of the sort, but it was mine. No one could control me anymore. I was in charge of my own destiny without the judgment of my family. During this time, I also met my now husband, 32. We met when I was 23, and he was a godsend. He was handsome, charming, and loved everything that I loved. He was the perfect man for me. He somehow knew what I liked and was there through all the bad times. What I had gone through with my family left its wounds and hurt me in profound ways, but he was there every step of the way. We dated for two years before getting married. I didn't feel the need to wait since he was just perfect. The love he gave me was something I craved for my entire life, and finally someone was providing me with it. He was the missing puzzle piece in my life. The only downside is that Kay didn't like them. He could never say why, but he said he had a bad feeling. I shrugged it off, thinking that he was just being protective, and my husband and I have been married for two years. Married life for us was great. He was the doting husband who always showed his love for me. Sure, we had our occasional arguments, but nothing unusual. He would, however, often try and persuade me to reconnect with my family. He would say that it would be worth it to give them another chance. This would always make me upset because he knew how badly they had treated me. He would always say that he wishes he had more time with his own mother and that that's the only reason he insists so much. I always show compassion for that, but it still would upset me each time he'd bring it up and bring up the subject. As time went by, he got vaguely more insistent. I didn't understand why, and when I would ask him, he would say the same thing about his mother. So I didn't push any further, because the one time I did, he got uncharacteristically mad and left our house for a day. Kay insisted it was weird, but I simply thought that he got emotional about his late mother. Another thing that was odd was that every Christmas he would always attend a work trip with his buddies. He works in the medical field and insists that he needs his time alone. In the beginning, this would bother me because I wanted to spend time and holidays with him, but eventually I just let it go. So, since we've been dating, he goes on his work trip while I stay home and watch Christmas movies with Kay. It still makes me sad, but I try to be understanding since he's always with me. This year, however, after he left for his trip, I realized he had forgotten his phone. Kay, who had arrived by then, encouraged me to snoop. I quickly argued against it, saying that since it would be an invasion of privacy, I didn't want to do it. I also noted my husband would be back soon for it, since he never goes anywhere without his phone. However, his phone kept blowing up with notifications. This encouraged Kay to push further, and I finally obliged just to prove it was nothing. I picked up the phone, and after a few calculated guesses, I managed to unlock it. My husband used the same passwords for various things, so it wasn't hard to figure out. As Kay was watching over my shoulder, I went to see who his notifications were from, and my heart instantly dropped. He had dozens upon dozens of messages dating back to when we had first met, coming from my family. With tears in my eyes, I forced myself to read every single one of them. I quickly found out that my estranged family was paying my husband 
to get me to come back home. They wanted me to give my dying sister my liver. They repeatedly asked if he had convinced me yet, to which he would reply with, almost, their plan was to act sweet with me until I gave my sister my liver, and then they would cut all communication. His supposedly dead mother was texting him as well, asking him to hurry up with convincing his cousin so that they could get paid in full. It took me rereading that text a couple of times to realize that the cousin they spoke of was me. Most heartbreaking, he had inappropriate texts from a woman saying that she can't wait for him to come back. At this point, I was full on crying and Kay had to take the phone away from me before I could drop it. I ran away into the bedroom so I could be alone to sob. A little while after, I heard my husband return to, to the house to pick up his phone. He asked where I was, to which Kay said I had gone out. He left soon after, and I began to cry again. I'm now sitting in my room, writing this through my tears, unable to face Kay right now. The man I trusted with everything was my cousin and had used me for his own personal gain. I feel like I'm living a nightmare, and I just want to wake up. I don't know what to do. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. It's been days since I wrote about what had happened, and I'm still grieving. The man I thought was perfect for me was a monster, and the same family who had made my life miserable had done so again. Kay has been very supportive and is beyond mad. Admittedly, I am too. After eating tubs of ice cream and crying up a storm, I realized I didn't want him to get away with this. So with Kay's help, we got to work. Firstly, I filed for divorce. I never wanted to see this man again. Any love I had for him was gone, and I wasn't sticking around any longer than needed. This step was hard, but Kay was there through it all. It was agonizing to think about the happy life I thought I had, but finding out was better than the alternative. After that, he helped me change the locks on the doors. I kept the house signed under my name, so legally it was mine. We moved all of his belongings into storage so that he could pick them up when he came back. After all this, we went to my soon-to-be ex's workplace. Kay had taken dozens of pictures of my ex's text messages to have proof since he theorized it might be needed. We sat down with my ex's supervisor, who I had met on some occasions, and told him the situation. The supervisor informed us that my ex had mentioned something about a family member needing a liver in the past, but never thought anything about it. He apologized for this tragedy and assured me that he would take care of it. Afterward, we left back to my place and Kay bought some pizza and beers to help with my sorrows. We drank the night away and I felt happy for the first time in a while. Tomorrow, my husband comes back from his trip, so all that's left to do is to wait. I'm really nervous, but I'm also eager for this to be over. I feel years of my life have been wasted and I can only hope to recover them. I don't know if I will ever heal from this, but I suppose this is the first step. It's been a couple of months since I was last updated this. Things have been on a roller coaster, but not all bad. Upon arriving, my ex was very confused as to why he couldn't enter my house. I called him from inside to calmly inform him that I was divorcing him. He wasn't allowed in my home or anywhere near me, and he could pick up all his things in storage. He got into a rage and demanded to know what was going on. I told him I knew everything. I read the text between him and my family. I had found out about their plan and I never wanted to see him again. I quickly hung up and he started screaming and pounding on the door, yelling that he could explain. I called the police and thankfully they removed him from the property. Following that, I received threatening texts from my family and his, so I had to get a new number. I found out later that my ex was fired from his job. We got divorced and I changed my last name into something different since I wanted no ties to my family or his. I got a restraining order after he tried to break in a couple of times. It was a hard time, but eventually things became calmer again. I haven't seen my ex in some months and I've started to recover. Kay has been my biggest supporter through all this, and just recently we started dating. We're taking things slow for my sake, but I feel better every day. He's very patient with me, and I've started going to therapy to help with my trauma. It's not exactly hap happily ever after, but maybe it's the beginning. Well, this was a roller coaster. What you went through sounds absolutely awful. Your family is crazy. Good job getting your revenge. Many don't. Your ex totally deserved everything that happened to him. 
all of them did. There's a special place in hell for them. Wishing you lots of happiness. Someone ought to make a movie out of this. This is insane. I'm sorry your family did that to you. They're truly evil. I've seen a lot of stories, but this has to be one of the cruelest. I'm happy for you and Kay, though. Sounds like he was the support you needed at the moment. MVP. Next story. My sister, Eve, and her husband, Peter, my brother-in-law, are extreme gym rats. They're always at the gym, and they take a lot of effort in their body and appearance. Of course, that isn't a bad thing on its own, but they believe that anyone who isn't their exact body type, very thin with six-pack abs, is unhealthy, fat, and extremely ugly. They look great. I just don't like their attitude. Eve makes swimwear for women and sells them. My wife, Rosa, has bought a few of them and likes them. Rosa has had a really rough year so far and has gained a little weight. If I had to guess, I would say that she's gained roughly around four to six kilograms. She still looks good, but I can tell that her weight is making her a little self-conscious. Note, I think Rosa used to be slightly underweight before and now she's probably not. Rosa wanted to buy a few new swimsuits for the trip that we were going on in a month. Rosa went to Eve's to see if she could find anything nice, but Eve refused to sell her a bikini because she couldn't have Rosa ruin her image, and that she didn't want her product on a bigger body and a bunch of other really hurtful things. Of course, this really upset Rosa and only added to her insecurities. After I heard the story, I called Eve and told her that what she said to Rosa was unacceptable and that I didn't want to speak to her or hear from her again until she apologizes. We went back and forth a little bit and Peter even got involved, but I refused to hear any of it. I was hosting a big family gathering at my house. My family only gets together twice a year, so usually these are big deal and one is expected to attend. To be fair, I didn't want Eve or Peter there, but Rosa told me that I couldn't exclude them, so they're allowed to come. At my house, I managed to avoid speaking to them. I was enjoying myself, and it was really nice to spend time with my family. When it was time to eat, Rosa was explaining to everyone what she had made. It was a buffet-style meal with lots of different types of dishes. Eve made a, a quiet comment about how Rosa could probably eat that much food in one sitting, and Peter laughed. If I could hear it across the table, then it probably wasn't quiet. I, of course, wasn't having it. Before they went to get a plate to eat, I pulled them aside and told them to leave. They were mad, and I told them that I shouldn't even have let them in and the house in the first place, and that the original terms were still in place, that I didn't want to see or hear from them unless it was to apologize. They left, infuriated, and I carried on with my life. When people asked, I told them the truth, that I kicked them out because of everything that had happened. A few people agreed, but said that I was too harsh and that I shouldn't have kicked them out before they got to eat. I'm just wondering if I was actually too harsh on them. NTA. A meal is a minor privilege, and insulting the person who cooked it for you in the same way that caused issues between you before is a major deliberate misstep. You handled it appropriately by pulling them aside and not making a scene. If they want a relationship with your family, they can do the bare minimum and not insult your wife's weight. They are both bullies. Unless your family only consists of a bunch of uber-healthy people who have enough time on their hands to stay fit and are without any medical problems, i.e. thyroid problems, PCOs that are very common, they are going to get the same treatment from them. So you didn't just stick up for your wife, you stuck up for the whole family. You are showing them that nobody can treat them this way. If your sister and her husband keep this up, they are going to isolate themselves from the family very quickly. So kudos to you for being a good human being. NTA. Next story. My younger brother, 22, let's call him Stefan, is graduating from university this coming July and has invited my other younger brother, 18, and I to his graduation. History. Stefan, 13, caught our mother, 37 at the time, in bed with another man the man she is currently going to get married to, and it totally destroyed his relationship with her. He exposed her to our father immediately, and we all chose to follow our father during the ugly custody battle, and the fact that she had mental illness didn't help her case at all. She got visitation rights every weekend, but we never went and cried whenever she came to visit us. Mother lost her shit and had to go to many therapy sessions as she had lost the custody battle, all her children chose to live with their father and didn't want to see her. Stefan, 
was especially angry and said that he could never forgive her for betraying our father, and he cut off all contact with her despite her begging and trying to get in touch with him for the past first five years after the incident. He clearly stated that he wanted nothing to do with her and said that if she continued, he would call the cops on her, and my second younger brother felt that way too, so she stopped. Fast forward to now. I am on okay terms with my mother after a few years of ignoring and detesting her. She's always happy when I visit her and wants us to bond, but I'm not interested in building a bond. So during our latest catch-up session, my mother sheepishly smiled and told me that she was getting married this July and wanted all of her children to attend it. The date happened to coincide with my Stefan's graduation date. I immediately rejected her and told her that it was my brother's graduation date and we were going out for a celebration after the event so we would not be able to make it. At first, she was taken aback and then started bawling and said, not only do we exclude her from our major life events, yes, I did not invite her to my graduation either, now we're not even attending her major event. It's been so long and we still haven't forgiven her. I told her it was just the repercussions of her actions and just left. She has since been texting me nonstop and calling me, begging for my brothers and I to forgive her and attend her wedding even for a little while. She really wants us there or she won't be able to marry happily. I've told her no, but she keeps insisting. AITA for not attending her wedding? I was talking to her on a phone call and she says that she's going to postpone the wedding to a different date so that I can attend. NTA, your mother made a choice to be unfaithful. Often the consequence of such a choice is alienation from family members. Time does not heal all wounds, as surely as it does not wound all heals. If your mother wants her children at her wedding, she should reschedule. That is not an option for your brother's graduation.